Hi, I'm Dan Kubisky, co-chair of the International Community of the Society of Professional Journalists. Today is June 6, 2024. In just a few days, we will be commemorating the sixth anniversary of the murder of journalists at the Capitol Gazette in Annapolis, Maryland. And just two years ago, Jeff German was killed, reportedly because of a series of columns he wrote about corrupt political figures in Las Vegas. Many of us also recall with horror the names of news outlets and journalists tacked on the nooses and scaffoldings created by the January 6th insurrectionists. After more than 200 years of press freedom and of journalists being killed because of their work, the National Mall in Washington, D.C. will finally have a memorial dedicated to press freedom and those who practice the art of journalism. With me is Barbara Cochran, president of the Fallen Journalist Memorial Foundation. She's formerly with the Washington Star, NPR, NBC, and CBS. Now, first, Barbara, thank you very much for, for taking time from your very, very busy schedule to be with us uh, to talk about the foundation and the memorial. Uh, but I, I tell you, I looked at the board of directors, and it is a who's who of journalism. I am really, really impressed. You have assembled a spectacular group of of uh, men and women uh, as part to be part of this this uh, project. And I would encourage people to go and look at that website. So I mentioned earlier we had two hundred years plus uh, of uh, press freedom. And finally, there's going to be a memorial to those who have, have worked in this field and who have, I'm sorry. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, after 200 years or so, there'll finally be a memorial to those whose profession is explicitly protected in the First Amendment of the Constitution. So I guess the question is, what took so long? Well, I, I think it's possibly because uh, journalists aren't a part of government and uh, and are a little uh, resistant to organizing themselves. And so that's maybe why it took some time. But really, the, uh, the significant event that uh, you mentioned in your introduction, the uh, attack on the Capitol Gazette in Annapolis, which was the deadliest assault on American journalists in the United States ever in history. For that to take place in June of 2018, I think was really a, a moment that uh, made everybody stop and think about the fact that it's not just war zones, it's not just distant lands. It can happen in the newsroom of a community newspaper that journalists are killed for doing their job of covering the community. And I, so I think that really highlighted uh, the point. And then secondly, uh, that uh, in the same year after uh, that attack occurred, there uh, was an announcement that the museum, which was on Pennsylvania Avenue in Washington, would be closing. And that museum had housed a journalist memorial, uh, uh, both in their location there and in an earlier location in Virginia for many years. And so with, with the idea that that was going to disappear from Washington, that the uh, threats against the press seemed to be increasing, not diminishing, uh, that was what really uh, triggered uh, going to Congress and, and having this happen. And I also, I should mention, uh, this never would have happened without the efforts of our chairman, David Dreyer. He's a former congressman from California after he left Congress in 2013, he became uh, a member of the board of Tribune Publishing, which owned the Capitol Gazette. And because he was a congressman, he was familiar with how to get things done. And he knew that there was a law governing this. He still had friends and and uh, from both sides of the aisle in Congress. And so he was able to secure the bipartisan support that was needed to get Congress to authorize our foundation to build this memorial. And uh, I, like you, a lot of people said, why hasn't this happened before? And uh, I think everyone agrees it's high time, uh, particularly in this day and age when we're seeing uh, uh, reporters, journalists, photojournalists in danger in so many parts of the world. 
Okay, you you mentioned reporters and uh, media workers uh, around the world. That, that's the next point I wanted to get to. I mean, so far we had talked only about the threats to American journalists. Is this memorial going to be dedicated to the hundreds of our colleagues each year who are are killed by dictatorships, by by gangs, by by paramilitary forces? Absolutely. This this memorial represents all journalists all throughout the world. There will be no names. There are no there's no list of names uh, such as people might be uh, used to seeing on the Vietnam War Memorial, which introduced the idea of uh, individual names on a memorial. Uh, but that means that uh, people can, when they uh, go to the memorial, they can think about a journalist they may know. They can think about someone from their home country. Uh, they can think about a historic figure uh, like uh, an Ernie Pyle or an Ida B. Wells, you know, someone who, uh, uh, really acted with great courage to bring news to the public. And uh, that's that's why there will be no names, but why the memorial will uh, be a beacon for visitors from uh, all over the U.S. and all over the world. Okay. And, and, and I saw in March you had awarded uh, the contract to design the memorial to uh, the John Ronan Architects Company of uh, Chicago. And if you're looking at good architecture, Chicago is the place to you know to go. Let's let's face it. Um, where do we stand now? Where do you stand now? What's the timetable? How are how, how are things looking? We we're, we're very excited about the selection of John Ronan Architects, and uh, he's uh, designed a beautiful building for the Poetry Foundation in Chicago. He was a runner up to design the Obama Presidential Library and Center, and he's come up with something a design that uh, conveys the ideas of transparency, clarity, light, all the qualities that we hope good journalism uh, will. Uh, will foster. And, uh, and so we were very excited about his design, which emphasizes that. Uh, this, uh, the whole process of building a memorial in Washington and on the National Mall is governed by uh, a law that specifies 24 different steps to go through. We had to get approval for con from Congress. We had to get approval for the site. Uh, we had to uh, get approval uh, for the specific site. And now we've uh, selected an architect and, and we uh, are in the process of getting approval for that uh, design concept from the various agencies that uh, govern that. I said there are about 24 steps that we have to go through. Well, we're on step 13. So, <laughs> uh, and people tell us that we've achieved a lot in the five years that the since the foundation was uh, created. Um, so we, we're, we're pleased that we're doing that. Our goal is to be able to uh, get the get approval of the design, uh, uh, be able to start construction, and to we would very much like to dedicate the memorial in June of 2028, which would be the 10th anniversary of the attack on the Capitol Gazette in Annapolis. Wow. And, and, and uh, as someone who's been in Washington for more than 40 years, to get so much done in such a short time, you're absolutely right. That is an amazing piece of work that you've been able to do. Um, to say something moves at snail's pace in this town is being generous way too often. Well, you know, if you think about it, the, uh, the National Mall and, and uh, the area in Washington around the National Mall is some of our most sacred space. And so uh, quite rightly, the National Park Service for whom we'll, we're building this memorial and the other federal agencies have a heavy responsibility to make sure that uh, any new memorials that are built are, uh, are worthy and are in keeping. So that's, you know, we're very proud uh, that the, uh, the agencies have uh, felt that it's extremely important to have a memorial that, uh, not only will honor journalists who uh, have been killed in the line of duty, but also will represent the idea of freedom of the press for all the visitors who come to the mall. The mall, you know, is the most visited national park 
in the country more than the Grand Canyon or Yellowstone or you know the the many beautiful parks that we have. So to have a memorial there that will remind people of the importance of freedom of the press, we will reach millions of people every year, which is just so uh, important and so exciting. Right, I'm I'm looking very much looking forward uh, to the dedication uh, ceremonies, and I hope the SPJ can get an invitation to that. I, I'm sure you'll you will be able to. <laughs> um, lastly. Uh, there's still a lot of work that needs to be done. I imagine there are still funds that need to be raised. Go ahead, make your sales pitch. What can we who are not in the commission or in, in the foundation do to help you? Thank you uh, very much for uh, letting me talk about that. This uh, memorial will be built entirely with private funds. Uh, there's no government support for it, which, uh, you know, is it's a, a daunting, but it's as it should be. Uh, we have a goal of raising $50 million. Uh, so far, we have uh, pledges and, uh, and have received contributions totaling $23 million. Uh, now, that $50 million will uh, cover the cost of building the memorial and creating uh, an endowment so that uh, our foundation can continue educational activities, sponsoring events, and uh, helping with the maintenance of the memorial after it's built and turned over to the Park Service. Uh, but we do have to have uh, the money for construction costs in the bank, uh, plus 10% for the maintenance fund, before we can get a construction permit. So we're uh, we're in the uh, heavily in the process of securing support. Uh, and I would say, uh, you know, we certainly are looking for support from the journalism community and that has been forthcoming, but we've also received support from people who are, as our chairman David Dreyer likes to call them, uh, the uh, lovers of uh, the first amendment, lovers of a free press. And, uh, you know, if you think about it, all citizens, the, all the public benefit from a free press. And so for uh, anyone who cares about that, cares about truth and information and news and uh, the investigative powers, the watchdog, uh, the watchdog role that the press plays, uh, we would welcome their support and, uh, and uh, you know, we hope that we'll get uh, support from journalists and members of the public from wherever they may be. I, I will put the URL for the uh, foundation uh, as part of this video. It will also be in our next newsletter uh, for sure uh, as well. Great. There's a little button on the front page, so it's pretty easy to find. And, and we certainly welcome any and all contributions. Well, I noticed Marlon Fitzwater, uh, you know, a press secretary, had, you know, so one of the opponents, if you will. <laughs> oh, that's interesting. Donated. You should mention that. Uh, Marlon uh, is one of a group of uh, the press secretaries, White House press secretaries, going all the way back to uh, the Johnson administration, the LBJ uh, administration. Uh, we have the press secretaries, uh, uh, living press secretaries from every administration up through uh, uh, the Trump administration who formed a committee, a support committee, and that information is there on our website too. We're very grateful to Dee Dee Myers who served under uh, President Bill Clinton and uh, Dana Perino, who served under President George W. Bush for their uh, uh, role in organizing this committee of support. So a bipartisan group, and we're very grateful for that. I, I, I had noticed uh, uh, Dana Perino's uh, name on the list as well. That was uh, quite impressive. Uh, very good. Um, Thank you again for taking time from your, your busy schedule. I know you're coming off of a cold and you've got so much work you have to do, but uh, to take the time with us, I, I, I really do appreciate it. So Barbara Cochran from the uh, Fallen Journalist Memorial Foundation, have a pleasant day. Thank you so much. I really uh, am very glad to have the opportunity to tell your audience all about the project.